Hello friends, welcome to this fourth video on complex analysis. In the last video we saw why we need to expand the set of real numbers to set of complex numbers and this is how we define a set of complex numbers. We define set of complex numbers which is denoted by this C as the set containing the numbers of the form A plus Ieta B where A and B are real numbers and Ieta is square root of minus 1. So basically we, we will use whenever we have ita square that is equal to minus 1, right? This is how we define the set of complex numbers in the last video. Now let us define how to add and subtract and multiply and divide two complex numbers. It's uh, pretty simple. When you have, uh, first thing is you say that two complex numbers a plus b ita is same as c plus I d ita. They are equal, two complex numbers are equal if and only if a is equal to c and b is equal to d, okay? This is the first thing. This is the uh, this is how we define the equality of two uh, complex numbers. Then subtraction and addition of two complex numbers is basically, okay, whenever you have a complex number a plus ieta b, right, generally we denote it with the symbol z, z is a plus ieta b. This a is called the real part of the complex number, right, and it is denoted by re in uh, round brackets z and b is called the imaginary part of the complex number and we will write it as imaginary im of z right so so basically when you do this addition and subtraction so you have to add and subtract the corresponding parts so basically this is a, a complex number and this is a complex number so what you have to do you you have to add the real parts and the imaginary parts separately and you will have a plus minus c plus b plus minus d times ieta and how you will multiply two complex numbers? You can use the distributive law. <clears throat> so how you will multiply? You have this a plus b ieta times c plus d ieta. So when you use the distributive law, this is this will be ac times ad ieta. Uh, sorry, ac plus ad ieta. This is b plus bc ieta, and this will be this bd into ieta ieta. So it will be bd times ieta square. And ita square is minus 1. Ita square is minus 1 from here. So you will be having AC minus BD. That is real. No ita involved. And there is a there is an ita in these two terms. So you have plus ita AD plus BC. So this is the product. So whenever you uh, multiply two complex numbers, A plus B ita and C plus D ita, you will get AC minus BD. This is the first term. Plus BC plus AD bc plus ad times ieta right and how to divide two complex numbers right so it is basic basically rationalizing as we have done in the last videos also so you have c plus a plus ieta b divided by c plus ieta d so you will multiply and divide it with c minus ieta d you uh, uh, like uh, in the numerator you can use the distributive law so you will get ac plus bd plus bc minus ad times ieta and in the denominator you have a plus b a minus b you will use that formula so it will be a square that will be c you have basically c plus ieta d times c minus ieta d so it will be c square plus sorry minus ieta d square and this will be minus d square minus minus will become plus so it will be c square plus d square in the denominator so this is a complex number which you will get this is the real part and this is the imaginary part and of course, you need that c square plus d square is not equal to 0, right? So, this I have already explained that whenever we have a complex number of the form a plus ita b, a is the real of z, if this is a complex number z, and b is imaginary of z. So, you can always write a complex number as z is equal to real of z plus ita times imaginary of z, okay? And this is, this is an important thing to note that, for example, in case of real numbers, we have a natural ordering of the numbers. For example, if somebody asks you 5, 7, 9, 3, minus 2, arrange it, okay, according to, in ascending order, so you can write it, minus 2, 3, 5, 7, 9, because you know how these numbers are placed on real axis, but there is no such thing in case of complex numbers. You cannot compare 5 plus 2 ieta with minus 1, minus 3 ieta. You cannot have these things that this number is greater than this number so we don't have a natural ordering for complex elements right okay now let us move ahead okay already we have seen that uh, we have seen that in at the end of 18th century this gauss argon and vessel they have given this 
a point representation of complex numbers so what is that exactly it says that whenever you have a complex number a plus eta b you can represent with the point a comma b in the cartesian plane okay and in that case you will call your x axis this is basically your x axis but when you are representing complex numbers you will call it as a real axis because this axis will denote the real part of your complex number and this axis axis you will call as imaginary axis because this axis represent the imaginary part of your complex number for example if i have number 3 plus 3 eta i can rep uh, represent this number on the cartesian plane as 1 2 3 3 on x axis and 3 on y axis so this is a number 3 plus 3 eta and suppose i have 5 eta so 5 eta is basically 0 plus 5 eta so i have 0 on real axis and 5 on uh, imaginary axis so 1 2 3 4 and 5 so this is my point 5 eta right and in this case this x y cartesian plane is called argon plane uh, uh, from the name of the mathematician who in, who introduced this and or it is also called sometimes complex plane right so this is this point representation is very useful for us so we have to keep this thing in mind that we can represent uh, complex numbers as points in the plane so okay now when we have a complex number a plus eta b then i know that i can represent it on the complex plane with the uh, point a comma b so this is my basically point a plus eta b so what is the distance of this point from the origin okay we can use this pythagoras theorem obviously if this is a plus eta b then this length is a and this length is b so this is right angle triangle this is 90 degree so i can use the pythagoras theorem the hypotenuse will be this square plus z square square root so the length of the pythagoras uh, length of the hypotenuse which is the distance of this point from the origin is square root of a square plus b square and this is an important quantity and we give it a name that is called the absolute value of z okay so what is the absolute value of z z is the complex number its absolute value is the distance of the point which represents it on the argon plane from the origin right so basically absolute value of z is denoted by like this this is the notation for absolute value of z this is the distance between z and origin okay when z is represented as a number as a point on uh, in xy plane right okay so basically whenever we have and the, what is that quantity this is a plus eta b so basically this is real of z square plus imaginary of z square square root so you can write it as real of z square plus imaginary of z square square root this is the absolute this is the definition of the absolute value of the complex number for example if you want to compute the absolute value of 0 0 is actually 0 plus eta 0 so its absolute value will be 0 square plus 0 square that will be 0 right and obviously we know that 0 complex number 0 plus 0 eta is this point itself and its distance from 0 is 0 and this eta by 2 what is the absolute value of eta by 2 this is actually 0 plus eta times half so its absolute value will be 0 square plus 1 by 2 square. So that will be 1 by 2, right? And what is the absolute value of this this quantity? This is 3 minus 4 eta. So it's the real part square plus imaginary part which is minus 4 square. So you will get 9 plus 16 that will be square root of 25. So you will get 5. So this is how we define the absolute value of the complex numbers. And we will see that it will be, uh, it will be of great use for us in the complex analysis, right? I'm just going through very fast because these are very simple things okay so next thing we define is complex conjugate of a complex number right in the last slide we defined the uh, absolute value of a complex number now we are defining the complex conjugate of a complex number what is complex conjugate of a complex number suppose you have this complex number a plus eta b you take the reflection of this complex number in the real axis okay what you will get this this a denotes this distance and this b denotes this distance so if you will take the reflection this a will remain the same and this b will be minus b right so the, the new number will be a minus eta b so this is called the complex conjugate of this number this is called complex conjugate of above number right so basically this is how we define the complex conjugate of a plus eta b as a minus eta b and we denote with z bar okay z bar is complex conjugate of z and if z is a plus eta b then z bar is a minus eta b okay and this is very important z bar is very important okay 
so these are some properties which i want to go through very fast so first property is z is equal to z bar if and only if z is real uh, so we, you can easily prove it z is equal to z bar means a plus eta b is equal to a minus eta b so a a cancels so you have b is equal to minus b which implies 2b is equal to 0 which implies b is equal to 0 and if in the real, uh, complex number a plus eta b b is 0 it, it means that it is only a and it is only real so it implies that z is real and converse is straightforward right so we have that a number is equal to its conjugate if and only if that number is actually a real number right that you can see from here also uh, <clears throat> A number basically the conjugate is the reflection in real axis right so if we are on the real axis so if we take the reflection we will again be on the real axis so we will be at the same point so it means that conjugate is same when the number is real and converse is also true right you can check this very like easily that z1 plus z2 conjugate is actually z1 conjugate plus z2 conjugate and similarly for subtraction similarly for multiplication and similarly for uh, division right this thing is important this is very important we will use it again and again that real of z is actually z plus z bar by 2 how z is your a plus eta b and a is real of z so and z bar is a minus eta b you add these two quantities you will get z by z plus z bar is equal to 2a which implies a is equal to z plus z bar by 2 so this is basically real of z a is real of z is z plus z bar by 2 Similarly, you can subtract these two equations, these two equations you can subtract to obtain this relation that imaginary of that is z minus z bar by 2a, okay. These two uh, things are very important, we will use it again and again and this thing, the conjugate of a conjugate of a number is that number again. So it is very clear, if you take a number, take its reflection, you get here. Again take the reflection, you will again go to the same number back, right. So this is obvious. And this thing is also true that modulus of absolute value or modulus of z is same as absolute value of z bar. So your z is a plus eta b. So it implies that its modulus is a square plus b square. And z bar is your a minus eta b. So its modulus will be a square plus minus b square. And minus b square is again b square. So you get the same quantities, right? So it means that z modulus of z is same as modulus of z bar. And this thing is very important. If you multiply z and z bar, that will be a plus eta b times a minus eta b. You can use the formula that will be a square minus eta b square. This eta b square will be minus b square minus minus will become plus. So it is a square plus b square, which is the square of the modulus of z, right? So this is again an important uh, equation, which we will use again and again, right? So uh, here we define two quantities. One is the absolute value of that, another is conjugate of that, right? Next is last uh, last slides we saw how to represent a complex number with the point in the Cartesian plane. Now uh, we can also represent the same complex number as a vector. For example, suppose I have a complex number a plus eta b, then I know that it can be represented with this point a comma b in the Cartesian plane, and the same can be represented with the vector. What is that vector? The vector is the uh, one which joins that point in the Cartesian plane to the origin, right? For example, how can I represent the uh, number 3 plus 2 eta with the vector? So it is basically 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. So I have this point and this is the vector which represents my complex number this, okay? How can you represent a complex number minus 4 eta? So minus 4 eta is basically 0 minus 4 eta. So 0 on real axis and 1, 2, 3, 4, minus 4 on imaginary axis. So this is my vector, this is the vector which represents the point, uh, the complex number minus 4, uh, minus 4 eta, right? So this is how we can represent our complex numbers with vectors. Why do we need to represent complex number with vectors? Actually, this representation will help us to prove very uh, useful inequalities in like uh, one line or two lines okay so for example the famous inequality which we'll, we will use in ag again and again is triangle inequality what is this inequality this inequality says that z1 plus z2 modulus is less than is equal to z1 modulus plus z2 modulus there are many ways to prove this but if you use this vector calculus it is like damn easy thing so let us prove it using this vectors notation of the complex numbers so basically you have two complex numbers you have this and i am representing them with vectors so you have this vector z1 
okay and you have a vector z2 okay and you now know the vector addition parallelogram law of vector addition but does it say it says that uh, if you want to add two vectors just complete the parallelogram with these two vectors add as the two sides of the parallelogram the diagonal of that parallelogram will give you the sum of the two vectors that is z1 plus z2 right this thing we know from vector calculus right now see in this case what is the length of this side this is mod of z1 and what is the length of this side that is mod of z2 okay and because this is a parallelogram the length of this side is same as length of this side so this is mod of z2 okay and now what is the length of the of the diagonal that will be z1 plus z2 mod right so basically we have a triangle like this this is mod z1 this is mod z2 and this is mod z1 plus z2 and we know that sum of two sides of a triangle is always greater than equal to the length of the third side so use that thing so we have this thing this is the length of this side plus length of this side the length of two sides that will give us z1 mod plus z2 mod that will be greater than equal to z1 plus z2 mod this is the triangle inequality so you can prove it otherwise also right you can start with taking z1 is equal to a1 plus eta b and z2 is equal to a2 plus eta b2 okay and then use some algebra to prove this thing you can also do that but it is damn easy when you use the vector notations of complex numbers right okay let us prove one more inequality that that is also very useful and we will use it again and again this is this inequality that z2 minus z1 is less than is equal to z2 minus z1 okay right there are two ways to prove it one is this algebraic you can use a triangle inequality to prove it you start with no, mod of z2 now you can add and subtract z1 right now you can use the triangle inequality the triangle inequality uh, says that a plus b mod is less than is equal to a mod plus b mod so here this is your a and this whole thing is your b so this is less than is equal to a mod plus b mod right so now you can take this on the other side you will get mod of z2 minus mod of z1 is less than is equal to norm of z uh, mod of z2 minus z1 right that is one way to prove it the other thing is you can use the vector notation again now we know that if you have a vector z1 here and z2 here right then if you complete the triangle like this this vector denotes the vec uh, this vector is z2 minus z1 this is again from vector calculus so now again use that uh, sum of two sides is greater than equal to third side so you have this side length of this side which will be z2 minus z1 mod plus length of this side that will be uh, or, or this side plus z1 mod is greater than equal to length of the third side that is z2 mod right now you can take this on the other side so you'll get z2 minus z1 mod greater than equal to z2 mod minus z1 mod okay this is an important e equality which we will use again and again right okay next we have one more representation of complex numbers that is polar coordinates of uh, polar coordinates representation of complex numbers okay that we will do in the next video thank you